Hey guys, I'm Burning Dog Face, and my recording program updated yesterday, which I'm mentioning because apparently this update has made it decide of its own volition that no matter how the option is checked, it's going to record the uh, HUD for the program itself in the footage from the game. So sorry about that. There's going to be a box at the top of the screen for at least the next two videos. My bad. I didn't notice that in time. So, uh... Yeah, my apologies for the inconvenience. Just try to ignore it, I guess. Welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake 2. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I have no idea why I'm suddenly receiving, uh, evidence in the corner of the screen. Is it just giving me back every evidence card I've ever had? Shit, there goes my intended intro. It's doing this. I'll tell you what. I'll just leave this room. So the music will at least stop. What is going on over here? Oops. Didn't mean to push that button. I didn't mean to push that button either. Okay. Okay. This is silly. I take a deep breath and just uh let's try that one again, shall we? Oh, for God's sake. Okay, so this one is uh bringing me to the right loading screen at least. So I feel like it's not the wrong save slot. I was loading an auto save instead of uh, a manual save. That was my mistake. And of course, it just worked from the menu because I just hit continue, so it hit whichever one I had done last. Oh boy, and there goes uh, all the evidence again. It's very strange to me they have not yet cleaned off that blood. They took the flesh down, but they left the blood. And now that we know the truth about the cult, how the hell did that even get there? Did Scratch put that there? Okay, so evidence is still pouring in. I guess that's probably related to the bug where that happens with a new one if I interrupt it. But whatever, man. Uh... Yes. Shout out to Elthwar, who says, uh, Yeah, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle ended the final problem with Sherlock Holmes dying in a battle with Moriarty in 1893. And after eight years, Doyle wrote The Hound of the Baskervilles as a return to the series with a case set earlier in Sherlock's career. And in 1903, the adventure of the empty house had Sherlock officially returned, declaring that he had faked his death, allowing the series to continue past the Reichenbach Falls. So that's very interesting to me. I really like the, uh... Just the idea that even as far back as that, even an, an author as, you know, basically worshipped these days as uh, Arthur Conan Doyle could decide, you know what? I was wrong about that. Let's bring him back to life. Fuck it. Uh... Oh, yes, yes, I wanted to do a thing on this. Shout out to Justin Jones, who says, The fishing nonsense makes me think of my favorite scam, criminals pretending to be law enforcement. Unfortunately for them, they don't know how U.S. law enforcement actually functions, so I had to laugh when someone tried that bullshit on me. Each time you change Dean Allen and so... I'm not even moving. Why is it getting quieter and louder? I thought it was which way I was facing, but... No, it's which way Saga is facing, because there was a bit of a glitch there, wasn't there? I don't... Everything feels louder today. I'm starting to say... Each time you change between Alan and Saga, I have to remind myself that the sound cuts are deliberate and that the game isn't glitching out. I don't know how the transition looks, but the audio design makes me think that it isn't pleasant. 
Well, let's see. Every time we do this, the camera goes forward past uh, Saga's shoulder and then tilts down to point straight at the floor before plunging into the black puddle. And now we're in the puddle. And now it's just the impression of movement as if we're underwater and it's very dark. But there's something bright ahead of us and there's... Let's see, red electricity arcing in front of us. It kind of looks like the, the water tunnel effect from sliders and they were going between universes. And then, oh, there's Alan's face in the dark, and we're suddenly rushing out of the puddle towards Alan, who's facing the puddle. And just as he turns around, the camera rises up to his shoulder level, and now we're in control of him. Huh. Yeah, the impression I get there is that it's kind of like a water slide, with like the tube where it's all dark inside, and there's nothing but the sound of rushing water. Except that, unlike a water slide, the entire tube would be filled with water. But, uh... We need to get back to Saga. <laughs> Dust motes or something. It looks like that is suspended ahead of us. Maybe rocks? Pebbles? And it's all the big swirling tunnel heading towards this tiny point of light. Hi, Saga. Okay. Well, I want to do a shout-out to, uh, Torek00, who actually managed to, uh, catch up, despite starting later than the rest of us, and that's really impressive to me, even with the breaks I took. Oh, yes, and there was a thing I wanted to do, because someone asked me. You know, uh, in the previous episodes, when I got all the deer heads, I showed off, uh, where all the things in Watery were. And, uh, then I mentioned where all the things in Cauldron Lake were, so at least for the sake of, uh, you know, at least for the sake of, com of uh, completion, the, uh, the five locations in, uh, Bright Falls are, well, that one there in the Elderwood Palace Lodge in the FBI field office. There's one in the Odeer Diner in the storage closet in the back. There's one in the Valhalla Nursing Home in the Lounge, which was not called the Lounge on the map. Uh, there's one in the Wellness Center in Bloom's Workshop. And finally, there's one in the Ranger's Cabin in Bunker Woods, which you cannot access until after you save Tor. Alright, we've had quite enough faffing around here. Bottle of bleach just chilling on the floor in the middle of the restaurant. Oh, I had a comment with those two, didn't I? Uh... Ah, yes, shout out to Faye Otter, who says, Quick, somebody call nobody so they can save the world! And Marcy. <laughs> Let's see. I believe... With all of the lunch boxes and all of the, uh... the deer heads found, that brings us to everything. I wonder why they didn't have a thing for deer heads. Odin spoke directly to me in the mind place. Did it take these off the wall? It did! It felt different, clearer, like a conversation. What does this mean? He called me a seer. Or did I just not put these on before? Uh... All Andersons have powers. Mom never told me about them because she thought they were dangerous and wanted me to have a normal life. Communicating in the mind place? Yeah. They can communicate with me here because they have something similar. Because we're family? Freya always thought our powers had a dangerous side. Odin and me did fuck with things that should not have been fucked with. Your mom had common sense. 
She raised you right. Kept you safe. I'm not surprised she didn't tell you about the absent power. <clears throat> Sorry, the mind place isn't some mental technique. It lets me see inside people's heads, see the truth. Okay. Tor and Odin can actually speak with me in my mind place. Thanks to their own powers. I'm a seer, can see into people's heads. Tor and Odin aware of mind place because they have powers too. Uh, Casey, David, and I took a break, and I moved to Watery with Logan. Uh, Logan's part in the story. No. My life in Watery. I never did any of these things. It's like some bad soap opera version of my life. My life in Watery? The story says I left David and Job for a trailer. This is not me. This is not my life. Uh... Uh, I remember you and David having problems. You needed a break. Wake even ruined my relationship with David in his story? What the fuck? I really like that. Tor and Odin understand the true nature of the mind place. Connection to Tor and Odin. Tor and Odin are my relatives. The evidence fits with what I know is true. It's a lot to process. Tor and Odin related to me. Evidence adds up. Wow. But there's still two missing from that. Uh, the Cult of the Tree. Whenever the cult caught someone taken over by the shadow, they cut out the monster's heart, pushed the switch into the hole, and flicked it. Uh, cult ritual, what is it? That's it. The cultists knew the clicker had power. They found it at Cauldron Lake. Lake. That's a typo. Ilmo Koskula stood in front of the small gathering. Mocha was a wonderful moose. His skull will become the crown of the Grand Master. Uh, Vladimir Bloom, Rose Marigold. Ilmo and Yako Koskula. Grand Master. Interesting word to use under the circumstances. Yako and Ilmo were running the cult. Yeah, we knew that part already. I thought I had another one. The story. I could spend a lifetime trying to understand all of this and still have questions. Still, this makes more sense than it did. I don't even... Huh. Let's see. these. I don't even know if I looked at these descriptions before. Alex Casey lunchboxes. I found an Alex Casey lunchbox with manuscript fragments inside. Who does this belong to? Are there others? Nursery rhymes. An FBC researcher is lurking with nursery rhymes to create a gateway to the dark place. Cult stashes. I found a stash of cultist supplies. I should keep an eye out and see if there are others. The story. I feel like I could spend a lifetime trying to understand. Yes, yes. Uh, the previous murders. This isn't a serial killer, but an organized group calling themselves the Cult of the Tree. This is a very different case now. We need to reassess the evidence. I should open a new case file. Fact versus fiction. According to Wake, the story is changing people's memories. What is fact and what is fiction? Cult of the Tree. To stop a cult, we need to understand them. Who is involved and what do they want? Wake and the Clicker. I've got to get the Clicker into Wake's hands and make him fix this ASAP. But how do I get to him? The Anderson Brothers. I rescued Tor Anderson, my grandfather, from the Dark Presence. He says I have special abilities that run in our family. I also learned that the Clicker has the power to amplify Wake's writing. The Trail of the Cult. Oops. I need to bring the Clicker to Wake, but I still have some questions. Who are those guys in the photo with the Clicker? Tor and Odin. What are they hiding? That was a while ago. Murder at Cauldron Lake. I killed Nightingale. I had to. He was a monster. The flooding around Cauldron Lake receded afterwards. Nothing about this makes rational sense. We found Alan Wake, a writer missing for 13 years at the shore of the lake. Hopefully he can shed some light on this. Oh boy, got a lot of them over here. I feel like the four later ones are just bugged out. Immune to the story because of hereditary power have that one up there? An overlap needed a push from both directions to manifest itself. Reality eroded by repeated dark lore and a counterpoint, crafted in depths of the dark place, connecting the story on the other side. Uh, I just 
laboratory change reality rules. No. Dark presence. The overlap. Hmm. From the overlap to form, it can't just be an urban legend. It must be supported by an accompanying narrative in the dark place. Interesting. The dark force of this lake was growing stronger. It was trying to make Ilmo and Yako be something they were not. Uh, the dark presence. The longer this goes on, the more people will get hurt. Hey! It unlocked them! I'll be damned. The story is affecting more people's memories. Why is it Ilmo and Yako? How does the Dark Presence corrupt people? No. Uh, scrolling around. Oh, how does story change reality? Rules. It's not just Rose. Ilmo and Yako are affected too. How long before my memories are affected? And here's this question, will my memories change? Oh, and that would be the one of the Tor, wouldn't it? The Anderson family is immune to the effects of the story because of hereditary pa because of a hereditary power. The story doesn't affect me like it does other people. Because of who I am. Because of my family. So Alan could remember in the first game because he was the author of the story, and Saga can remember well, as she just said, because it runs in the family. She's got that power, to Keep your chin up, says my lozenge trapper. Will my memories change? The horror story can't change my memory, uh, my memories, but I'm still affected by its events. Uh, the Anderson family is truly immune. Uh, good. So long as my health is safe, my head is safe from the story, I can focus on fixing this. The Dark Presence feeds on artists and the art hmm. they produce. That would be the Dark Presence. The Dark Presence leeches onto artists, manipulates their art. What power does it have by itself? It is pure destruction, as I understand it. Oh dear god, I forgot we had a fucking photo of the Dark Presence. It's just like a half a face, sort of, in the, that weird shape. Ahem. Entity using artists to give itself power via their art. Uses power to corrupt prop people slash try to escape the dark place. Uh, the one about the dark place feeds on artists. It's not just writing. Music, painting, film, photography, any artistic expression can feed it. Wake says that the dark place can be accessed from the bottom of uh, Cauldron Lake. That would be the overlap. No. That would be the dark place. Okay. The Dark Place. A dimension that's home to monsters. <laughs> Wild stuff. Another world reached via Cauldron Lake, home to the Dark Presence. Bleeding into our world through overlaps. Uh, Wake says that the Dark Place can be accessed in the bottom of Cauldron Lake. So what? Cauldron Lake is the gateway to some other world? The Dark Place. It's like New York, but it's not New York. And can be reached from the bottom of Cauldron Lake, but it's not really under the lake. Oh man, that was a long time ago. That was before she even realized it was fully supernatural and she was, like, doubting Wake's story. Even though she'd already taken down zombie, uh, uh, Nightingale. Oh, that would be over here, the new question that popped up. How does the Dark Presence corrupt people? Uh, he felt like he was drowning. With every cough, the black hole grew bigger. He imagined looking through it, into the darkness. The black hole grinned. <sighs> this man was dying. Pneumonia? The Dark Presence used his fear and pain. Emmett Elwood had had enough. They reached at him with their unwashed hands. He'd beat them down, beat them until they no longer moved. The Dark Presence used his phobia, amplified it into hate. He'd been on the trail of the writer forever, the writer he despised. Uh, he'd be caught, murdered. He was reborn out of hate. Yeah, yeah. Nightingale hated Wake. Did the darkness use that hatred? Well, technically, it took him the old-fashioned way because Barbara was still in charge, but it had still had him lying around when Scratch took over. No one will find her corpse, but a secret like this doesn't die. It grew inside them, the darkness taking over. Mulligan and Thornton's guilt was a door for the Dark Presence. Read a manuscript. There was another one, but uh, we've already read that manuscript page. Oh, uh... Which one is Emmett? 
Oh, this one, yes. Yeah, this one, Cynthia Corrupted. Cynthia Weaver hated being old. She'd been a doer, a fighter. Now the bathroom frightened her, afraid she'd break her hip, like Norman. Cynthia had always kept her lantern close to hold the darkness at bay. Oh dear, my lantern. I think I've lost it, Cynthia said. This will put a smile back on your face, my dear, a voice said. A man's voice. Someone in the bathroom with her. In the dark, the light bulb had blown. She meant to replace it days ago. How could she forget? She had slipped getting out of the tub. She lay in the tub now. She lifted her hand. It looked wrong. Too many hands. In a black void with no sense of up or down, she was underwater. A dark shape pushed her down. Dark water pressed itself into her. She screamed. It came out of bubbles. all the evidence I have. Fortunate. I mean, I didn't 100% the game, but I got a shitload of collectibles and stuff, and I feel really, really good about that. Okay. I guess that's probably going to have to be uh, most of that right there. The new plan, share the plan with Casey and Estevez. Let me see. I'm actually really impressed with myself that I managed to find all the uh, Alex Casey lunchboxes, I solved all the nursery rhymes, and I unlocked all the cult stashes. I feel really, really good about that. Why is it still red? The red ones were the ones I hadn't figured yet. It's really funny to me that it turned out to basically be, uh, Neighborhood Watch. Like, everything they intended was then used against them by Mr. Scratch, simply by bringing in an outsider who, uh, didn't know any better. Because they wanted to encourage the reputation that they were a sinister murder cult, so that, uh, people would stay out of the woods. Except then, once the FBI started investigating a murder, oh shit, there's a sinister murder cult running around! Holy mackerel. But, uh... Let me see. Oh, yes. Shout out to Torx00 who says, You know, Mr. Scratch telling you you're in my story adds a lot of context to these taken quoting the manuscript pages. Of course they would. He's their god, and it's their Bible. Oh, actually, on the subject of the thing I just mentioned, shout out to Elthwar, who says, While we can't say that the cult of the tree was the villain, like how they appeared at first, that was the reputation they were going for to keep people from approaching. But because they are still stuck in the story, the target can use them to set up a tragedy by tricking others, like, say, the FBI, in order to advance the darkness' own interests. And I'd say the difference in how the Taken are between former cult members and the rest is also to fool the cult into thinking they are doing better at fighting back the Dark Presence than they actually are. Plus, this uh, also keeps them from seeking allies, as well as bringing conflict the light between the Lightbearers, police, and the FBC as a result. Hmm. And I've just been standing in the rain this whole time. Right! Why don't I turn that off? dark as shit. I'm going to call it here. With all that uh, upkeep taken care of, and I'm really glad it was. I'm Burning Dog Face, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Alan Wake 2. When we head down the road to the, uh, the police station, and tell Alex Casey and uh, Agent Estevez... Yes, Agent Estevez, about uh, our plan to save the world from total annihilation. 
I have absolutely no idea what to expect at that point. Wish me luck, Rennie Dog fans. This is it. So, uh, keep your fingers crossed. Stay away from large bodies of water. And stay in the light. <laughs>